Human. Hi, my name is Human. I'm from tdjacobs.com and also healingsuicide.com. I'm Tom Jacobs. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and also a channel and medium and energy worker. I do all kinds of different healing things. This is a little brief update on, um, it's like a little dear diary thing, kind of, where I periodically do audio or video that, you know, explaining my own process. Um, sometimes it's like, I just need to talk about it. Sometimes it's, I'm thinking about it and I realize maybe this could be useful for you. So Dear Diary, when you see that on SoundCloud or my blog or sometimes periodically videos, it's because I, I'm i offering something in case it's helpful to you and it's got a kind of a personal angle. Um, yesterday I did a SoundCloud, which is a free audio thing. You can look up Tom Jacobs Astrology on SoundCloud.com. I'll put the link in the description of the video because I did post a new audio last night. It's about a half an hour long, which is a dear diary about grief, things that have been going on this week. I'm just thinking about the videos I have done in this playlist um, and also being really aware of things like, you know, in the world around us. I don't think a lot of people know how to deal with grief or they think that they don't know how or they wouldn't know how if they were willing to let it up. Um, you know, am I doing it right? What does it look like? So that's why I'm trying to do these, these videos and talk about different angles. I, um, uh, I don't know. As soon as I realized months ago that the coronavirus bit was, was a big deal, as soon as it was starting to be a big deal, I, I anticipated that grief would be a major issue for several reasons. Um, if a large number of humans passed away, then there's that literal thing, that literal fact of, re, you know, that reality to grieve. And as I said several times in these videos, even if you don't know somebody who is sick or has passed away, the fact that so many people have passed away affects all of us. It does, and we have to acknowledge that. But also, I talked about in some other video, where does grief come from? Well, there is stuff from other lifetimes, the memories of which are stored in your unconscious that get triggered. So that's what I go into in that SoundCloud thing. I encourage you to listen to that. And then as an addendum, come back here and watch this video. I do that all the time. And people, I don't know if anybody really does that. But, but anyway, what I'm going to say now will make more sense given what's in that half hour MP3. Are you willing to switch platforms? Go to audio and go to a different site? I don't, anyway, so what I was talking about was this, this a couple things about some other life grief that I would say it's it's fair to say that I haven't known how to deal with them, but I'm taking cues from the beings I channel and saying, okay, I just have to be willing to feel. Be willing to feel it and then let things over time come up, right? Like slowly ramp up. And this week I'm actually, I'm actually experiencing progress for the first time in my life about grief. And so I explained some of that in that half hour audio. This addendum is what's happened since then. So late last night, I can't remember if I recorded that MP3 yesterday or the day before, but anyway, about a day after I recorded that MP3, I'm still working on this. I'm still crying. Parts of me are still up on the surface. I still feel helpless. I still periodically have like energy push up from within my chest trying to get out. So I cry. I use crystals. I do all kinds of different things. Um, and last night, as, as some of you know, I am living in a hotel right now because of certain logistical complications. And um, I've had a really difficult relationship with this. Feeling almost as if I don't belong anywhere. Part of me saying, why, don't, why am I not allowed to have a home? So all that stuff in that half hour MP3 came up and I finally got one of those parts to speak was on the surface. So last night I was in, I was working, <laughs> we're doing Chiron reports or emails or admin work or whatever. And I stopped and I stood up and suddenly that part of me was on the surface and I was very frightened and very scared. And then I looked <laughs> at, I don't know, something, I don't know, there's like a box on the floor my shoes over there. And then I'm like, I I'm in a hotel. And that thing about not having a home came up. And this part of me 
essentially was in a kind of panic. And I paced in the room. I knew exactly what was going on. And I paced, I don't know, 20 or 30 times back and forth in this little hotel, back and forth, crying, and it was whimpering, and it was totally helpless. And I have been so grounded over the years that I was able to feel it, be filled with the feeling, and know that I was fine. That's one of the tricks and techniques here with dealing with grief or any other intense emotion. Cultivate a grounding practice so that you can handle stuff when it comes up and you can learn to recognize what isn't you, but it's a feeling that's a, a wave that's breaking. So in that moment, I didn't shy away from it. It was terrifying. I didn't, a, I didn't want to feel it, but also it was frightening. The feeling was fear and panic, and it was also frightening to feel that, which is why we try not to have to feel certain things, right? And then I sat down and kind of felt helpless, and I cried more. And I and eventually I went to sleep. Like that was kind of in that space. It quieted down, but I was still feeling that those emotions. I didn't feel better. I felt less panicky, and eventually, like I said, I slept. It took hours. <laughs> um I also had the fear of being alone and thought, I just wish um, my girlfriend could hold me now. And then I realized that part of me who feels that way sometimes, I need to spend time with. So I basically said to myself, it's okay. It's okay. We're, 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 she's not here. She's asleep in another room. And so I sat down again with myself and eventually it kind of tapered off, right? Eventually I went to sleep. Woke up today, um, I didn't feel necessarily any different. And then I did a, 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 a call to train someone who's starting to do work for me. And then I went to see my girlfriend before running errands. I had to pick up a couple of things from where she's staying. When I was sitting with her, I felt joy because like even now I feel a little bit of it where I feel like on the surface of my chest, there is some of that stuff that's been trying to push out. So I'll probably cry again later and feel helpless for a while and it'll process through some. But under that, I feel open. When I was with her, I didn't feel any of the pressure or tension. And I was with her and I was able to see that my relationship with her is my home. And I started to feel like this whole scenario was shifting and I felt more open space and I felt very, I just felt very loving in an undiluted way that I wasn't trying to work around a block or something. I just felt really, really open and just how I was looking at her. I was noticing how I was looking at her. So then I went to our storage unit. It's a long story about why we don't have our stuff with us. But this storage unit that's, I don't know, it's like a mile or mile and a half away. Um, basically, we had a chemical contamination at the house that wouldn't bother anybody, but it bothered my girlfriend. So it was VOCs from a mattress. We had... Anyway, so we're waiting to get her health stabilized till we can check out if we can keep all our stuff. Long story it's one of like seven long stories that combine into this long story thing. Anyway, you can see, you can see behind, no, <laughs> this camera, I can't figure out which is left or right behind me. You can see that little box on the bed. That's actually Onyx. I'm programming more Onyx tonight, but I had to go to the storage unit to get the tumbled Onyx that are not programmed, but I went there. There was no charge. The fact of that storage unit has been like, little daggers in my heart forever. The fact of not, you know, having to leave a home, having to feel uprooted, but it's been bringing up the grief stuff that I talk about in that 30 minute MP3. So I just want you to understand and I'm in process. I mean, probably after I'm done with this, I'll have that pain in my chest. I'll have to cry until it goes away. Just, but I want you to understand how much energy it takes to keep grief out of your field. 
or, or any painful emotion. And I want you to understand that you can choose to be stronger than any negative emotion that you have. And that being willing to feel it allows a wave to come up, crest, and break. You're not indulging negativity by acknowledging difficult feelings. I want to be really clear about that because the version of being a spiritual teacher that I employ, embrace, embody, play with, I don't know, and play, play with, the version of being a spiritual teacher that, that is a good groove for me insists that you not deny your feelings, but that you ground them. So you're not engaging with negativity because you're listening to a part of you who feels so upset that you can't function. You're not, you're, you're not, you know, feeding negativity by being honest about how difficult experiences have affected you. So I just, I hope that I can offer you this, these periodic videos, I can offer you a model of essentially sticking with it, even as it, this feeling seems to want to swallow you. You know, I was actually wanting to do something like this and wanting to do a couple other things about grief soon. Some other stuff coming up to share with you, some some uh, resources I'm making available for free to support you in, in doing this. Um, and then, of course, the number of dead in the U.S. inched. inched. It was inching toward uh, 100,000, which, of course, people make a big deal about base 10 round numbers. <laughs> anyway, um, and then of course, you know, a lot of people, a lot of leaders aren't talking about it, but then Joe Biden releases this, I guess I saw it labeled as a eulogy for those who are lost and, you know, who have passed away. That we as a culture, as a community, as a nation, but even we as, you know, citizens of earth as humans have lost. He was focusing, and I think, on the on the U.S. population, but and um, I didn't want to tie. I didn't want to do something just because the number was a hundred thousand, which apparently across today here in the U.S. But but anyway, just being aware that like when all this started, I knew grief would be a, a bigger issue, and uh, in the process of trying to deal with my own, I'm also trying to encourage you to not turn away from what feels so horrible. Oh, but he talked about. And he has lost some family members uh, decades ago when he was, I think before he, um, after he was elected, but before he was sworn in or took the oath uh, as a member of Congress, he, uh, he lost his wife and a child in a car accident. And then as, and then an adult child of his passed away from a, from a terminal illness. So, and he's got Pluto in the eighth house in cancer, by the way. I'll do a profile of him soon. Um, so anyway, um, I think he's also got Jupiter in cancer in the eighth house too. Anyway, um, and Jupiter, I think is South Node ruler for him, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, that idea of like the hole that threatens to swallow you, I think is an image, something like that he may have said, something like that. And um, it feels that way, but I want, I want all of you to know what I want you to help others understand that you feel powerless in the face of your emotions, but you become stronger by listening to those parts of you with compassion, by witnessing whatever it is that you experience. And my feeling of openness today, I know ab with absolute certainty, it's because that part gradually came up and then was on the surface and then was fully present in that moment of panic last night where I was really scared and pacing around. Sometimes that's what it takes to integrate a part of you that needs to know there's some compassionate listening or witnessing and leadership. There's some friendship. There's some love. There's some grounded person who will, who will say, I know. It's okay. Like whatever you're feeling, yeah, tell me about that. So even as states 
here in the U.S. and I'm perhaps in other parts of the world, I'm not really paying attention to all the news everywhere. But as some a lot of different states are working on reopening gradually, you know, and then certain parts of the country are going to have spikes in cases and they're going to close again. This is going to go on. But as that happens, we have this part, these parts of us that that yearn to return to normalcy. It's not going to happen soon. And no matter how some politicians are just insisting that if you just open things up, everything's going to be fine because, you know, people are still dying. Cases are still, you know, spiking here and there. Not everywhere. Some places have socially distanced enough and worked from home enough or whatever to, to, to make a big difference. But anyway, I want you to recognize that you're part of a collective that doesn't know how to deal with pain or grief. Why don't we don't talk? Why don't we talk about grief? Because we don't, some of us don't want some of us in new age circles don't want to feed negativity, but some of us, most of us, fear getting lost in those things. But I promise you, well, think about the energy wave trying to break. A part of you carries that in his or her heart, and if you don't welcome that part to the table to have that emotion come out, it will stay behind the scenes and bother you. Like I even noticed today in that hard open space, I was running errands. And I walked into the, I don't know, some drugstore, and there was a security guard, you know, 20 feet to the left. And he's just standing there with his, you know, his kind of arms crossed, just watching people. And I, and I said hi to him, and he said hi to me. But the way that I engaged with him was different than normal, because I was more open. I didn't have a part of me seeing everybody no feeling that I don't belong or I'm not connected. So, but I just want you to really understand it looks like feeding or indulging negativity, but you're allowing some part of you that's bent out of shape essentially to express, to be heard, to be witnessed, to know that he or she is accepted. And your whole deal, your whole life will change. Whatever you think is wrong <laughs> with you or your life or your choices, it will change if you deal with that most important, difficult emotion under the surface that you think you shouldn't deal with. Some people, it's shame or guilt, maybe regret. Some people, it's sadness or depressiveness. You know, for me, it's a lot of anger that actually masks. Um, grief. And I fully expect my experience of stress and tension and anger to radically change because this energy is starting to leave after being built or blocked. You say this build up, build up. What do you say? It has been building up. It had become built up like, um, layers of muck around an old drain or an old pipe or something it's starting it's starting to move finally and it's taken being over two years out of a stable home environment for this part of me to actually be able to get to the surface as i talk about in that half hour mp3 I think I'm going to wrap this up because if I would keep going, all I'm going to do is reiterate the invitation to feel your feelings. And and the thing about feeding, I'll say this, the thing about feeding negativity, understand that part of you isn't who you are. But that you carry a feeling that's stuck. So to listen to it, you can not believe it's who you are, but you can listen to it. Just like if your friend needs to say something and you know that's not who she is. You know, she might come in really angry or depressive or something. You know that's not her true nature. Same with you. Whatever it is, even if it's been stuck in you for years or decades or lifetimes, it's not who you are. All right. Thanks for playing. Thanks for your time and energy. Um, I'm going to go think about my life, my choices, and maybe cry some more. Take care.